Good day everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about um, can you use an old machine like this MacBook Pro and my other one you can see it in the back uh, MacBook. The MacBook Pro is 2006 model, very old. The MacBook is a little bit newer, it's a 2009 machine. Both have 4 GB of RAM. So can you breathe a new life into those machines and can you use them in day-to-day -day life? Well, let's find out. So first thing first, those two machines, they're limited to 10.7.5 macOS Lion. So that's very limiting. Yes, you can do some office work on it if you have Word and Excel on it, but browsing and anything else is going to be very painful because the newest software is not supported at all. So running newer browsers on this on these two machines is impossible on Mac OS X. So you have a couple of options. One, you can go with uh, Linux. Um, I think for a general user that's a, a big uphill. Or you can just go with Windows which is supported uh, directly on the machine with no problems and you have the bootcamp drivers for most of the stuff this particular MacBook Pro the 2006 is a little bit more tricky because the drivers are not supported in Windows 10 and we want to get Windows 10 so we're supported uh, when it came out this machine actually uh, originally supported Windows 7 and that's where the driver stops so Windows 8 and 9 you cannot that easily install bootcamp but as you will see I will show you it is possible and it is possible on this 32-bit EFI MacBook Pro to install 64-bit Windows 10. So let's uh, get this machine running. I'm going to show you first real quick how fast it boots to macOS 10, uh, to macOS 10.7.5. You will see I have uh, REFI, uh, REFIT, which is uh, it's a custom uh, EFI that you have to that you have to put put so you can select uh, which uh, uh, operating system you want and I'm gonna start into uh, Mac OS 10 real quick um, the machine runs on a 7200 rpm hard drive uh, it's not a standard one it has just a, a small amount of of flash it's those hybrid drives that came out so that's it it booted uh, relatively quick and as I'm gonna show you that is Mac OS 10.7.5 2.33 gigahertz Intel Core to do uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM so on this machine there is a application called Firefox legacy you can install it for browsing you know it has its hits and miss but in general in general this machine is not mm, I wouldn't recommend using for day-to-day -day use because it's very limited at this moment so let's go and start Windows where everything will be supported and you can use it for a lot more things so again the custom uh, EFI and we hit enter and it will start loading windows as you see it start windows just as fast as uh, Mac OS, so let's log in. And as you can see, we are in Windows 10. Um, in the beginning, you want to give it a minute or two to load everything. Right now, it's loading Bootcamp. As you see, yep, it loaded actually already. So you can have your, your sound, you can have your uh, keys etc everything works it's a little bit of a battle with this machine uh, compared to the MacBook uh, 2009 machine but it is possible and it is running 
it is running Windows 10 uh, as you can see 4 gigabytes uh, because of the 32-bit EFI it's only 3 gigabytes usable but the machine is running a 64-bit operating system as you can see I'm running actually on the latest and greatest updates couple of things here to, to, to know once you install it on this machine it's very important to go to personalization and what you need to do first is go to colors and turn off turn off transparency actually on both machines turn them off because that will speed up both machines but on this one it will stop the glitching that you experience with the video card X a Radeon X uh, 1600 so once you stop it everything works fine um, I'll show you now how to optimize this machine so it runs in the best possible way first thing you want to do is you want to go to right click and go to system and then you want to scroll down and go to uh, advanced system settings uh, that menu for most of you might be uh, very familiar it was well, it goes all the way back to uh, Windows XP, but we need to kill the performance of all those animated things. So choose custom. You can leave the, the smoothing edge of the screen fonts, and that's it. Everything else uh, needs to, to go. If you want to really speed it up even more, stop the, the system restore. That will speed up the disk access. I have le left my own uh, just in case and go to remote and go to remote and disallow the service hit OK hit OK that's it so that's the first thing you need to do the second very important thing for this machine because it's old and because the way updates nowadays on Mac OS and on Windows are done in a completely different way you need to stop the automatic updates well as you might have noticed on Windows 10 if you go to updates it doesn't allow that anymore so but you see some settings are managed by your organization that is because you need to edit the the group policies so it will notify you that there are updates but it will not start downloading and installing them this machine takes forever to update it I think it's because the the, the new way of doing updates uh, is just killing those older machines the newer updates you know Windows 10 is, is is made for newer machines so it requires solid state drives on all the drives it takes forever it can take literally uh, hours to do it depending on your drive so what you need to do is go right click run I already have it gpedit.msc hit enter now here you have to go to, to administrative templates and Windows components and you're looking for Windows update click it you see mine is enabled you're looking you're looking for configure automatic updates you want to do that on all your old machines actually you want to do it on your new ones too you, you want to be just notified not out install at all uh, so double click on this configure uh, automatic updates enable it and set it to two. notify for download and out install so what it will do is it will check for updates but it will not out download and, and start installing those those updates once you're done hit ok hit ok reboot your machine you're all set update your machine to the latest uh, version of Windows and you're all set that's all you need to do please do not install antivirus uh, program on this machine use it with caution Windows and Mac OS comes with built-in security uh, software so you in general on my uh, machines and in my company we don't use antivirus software because they're not needed so let me show you how it runs for general use for general use I actually set up took this machine out of the drawer for my daughter when the COVID hit and we had to go back to home school uh, okay well it's updated as you can see 
even on a regular drive. Keep in mind, you can plug a solid state drive in this machine, it will make it even faster, but on a re which will make your virtual memory uh, uh, runs much better, which will overall make the machine much faster. But even with my standard drive, the machine works pretty good. And I'll show you a couple of websites. We'll go through, let's go to, no, we don't want that. We'll go to, uh, sorry, Apple. There you go. As you can see, it runs actually very good. And scrolling, I had those comments, no, it will be very sluggish and stuff like that. No, it actually runs perfectly fine. This machine can run Windows 10, even with its unsupported graphic card, on this machine, the graphic card, you have to install it uh, from um, the Windows catalog uh, uh, drivers. Uh, it's, that's the easiest way to do it. There are guides online. If you, if you want to know more, ask me. I'll comment on, on the video. I'll let you know everything that, that I know. So let's, let's go for Apple website. You see it's a lot of images. But again, you can see it loads and works pretty pretty good let's let's go to learn more about the iPhone 13 you see for day-to-day -day use this machine is okay I actually have a 32 uh, 23 inch cinema display and I attached it to this machine and it worked perfectly fine you can you can use it with external display no problem so yep I mean it's it's a very usable machine for day-to-day -day use Recently, I saw uh, uh, a guy bought uh, a newer machine than this for one dollar. You know, if if you want to try it, try it. And that's why I'm making actually the video because I had some comments that a guy didn't believe me that it runs okay, and he said no, it has to go with Linux and blah 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 blah. Well, as you can see, it runs okay. You can even go to YouTube. YouTube.com. On this machine, the display, keep in mind, is 720p. This is not a full HD uh, display, so anything beyond 1080p is going to be overkill. Okay, let's go to this. I'm playing YouTube video at... It switched automatically to 720p, 60 frames per second. It is usable. No, no hiccups, nothing. You can go full screen even, that's fine. Kill those, and that's 60 frames per second. Yeah, it, it can it can become choppy. I think it's trying to to switch to a higher resolution, but now they will stay at 720p. Like I said, it's 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 usable. But 60 frames per second is not good for this machine. But in general, we can play 720p standard uh, standard videos. Okay, so let's get on the newer one, which is a MacBook. And we'll go straight to Windows on this one. It runs uh, Mac OS uh, Lion also. But I've set it up uh, directly to go to, uh, to Windows 10. And this machine I've configured for my wife to use when it was again pandemic and they had to work from home. And here we are guys. Um, Windows loaded. I'll just log in. And here we are. Actually on this one, I will I have left office uh, uh, liberal office to, to be updated so we can see actually to, to have a sense how fast it moves. On this one I have a little bit more things. Um, Again, it's running the latest and greatest. Again, you have to go to GP Edit and disable the automatic updating. Yeah, okay. Perfect. But on this one, Bootcamp is much easier to, to install. Uh, everything works. Uh, 
Yep, boot can installed. So let me just show you how it works. Again, we go google.com. It's a good idea to give it a minute or two, you know, to settle down all the processes in the background because doing right now a quick scan, uh, antivirus scan and stuff like that with Windows. But uh, I'll go again to apple.com. You know, scrolling. This machine is compatible with Windows 10 out of the box. Uh, there is nothing special you need to do. Just get it. Windows 64 bits. Uh, this MacBook uh, 2009, I think it was, uh, is running on 64-bit uh, EFI. So nothing you have to do, like special patches or anything like that. And as you can see, it runs very smooth, even on the heavy picture-loaded website of, uh, of Apple. We can go to even, I think, CNN.com. Let's let's just go there. Let's just try it. I haven't been there, so we'll see. But as you can see, you see it even asking to accept. So no cache files, nothing, and it runs fine. It's a very heavy one. It it it, it will load a lot of things. So let's close this. As you can see, it's still waiting for this, waiting for that. But once it loads. It runs perfectly fine, and you can do, you can do anything you do on your regular machine more or less with the same speed. Of course, it's not that smooth. Of course, it's a small screen, and and all the disadvantages of the old computer. But uh, machine machine runs perfectly fine. Um, I'm just yeah YouTube YouTube. Let's go to YouTube. That's probably the heaviest site. You can you can run on this machine. There you go, full HD. Yeah. Okay, find cinema subscribe. Are we on 1080p? Yep, we are on 1080p, and as you can see, it runs fine on this 2009 very old MacBook. This this one uses the the built-in Intel. X3100, uh, I think. Uh, like I said, it's fully supported in Windows. So, enough, enough of this. Let's go ahead and... Uh okay, so the machine finished finally. Updating. Let's do that. And as you can see, menus, everything just, you know, pops up straight away. Now, this one is starting for the first time. Uh, okay, blah, blah, blah. But again, as you can see, once you load it for the first time, it will load okay uh, after that. So let's open this. I'll close it, I'll reopen it so you can see how fast it will open in general use. No, we don't want that. And again, you know, it will autocorrect everything on the fly. I doubt you can type that, that fast. Uh, corrections, you know, everything will work. Don't forget, we were. When I started with computers, I was running on 5 gigahertz Apple II or something like that, and we were doing exactly this, so I'm not surprised it actually runs. So, there you go. Once you load it, like I said, the first time after installation, it's slower, but after that, everything works fine. I hope you liked the video. I hope I helped somebody, like I said. If you have any questions how to install it, what I've used, uh, why something is not working on your end, let me know below in the comments. I will let you know uh, how to fix it and how to do it. Thank you.